by the Chester Historical Commission, spearheaded by Grace Oppenheimer. For those familiar with National Historic Districts, you may know that to be creative, they have to have a theme for them, a, an overriding theme. And here for this village, it's a village that was developed uh, alongside and because of industry. And that's why it's called the Chester Factory Village National Historic District. It, that development happened in two phases. The first phase was a water-powered phase. The water power here is um, the west branch of the Westfield River enters and runs all the way through this village. And then Walker Brook comes down from Beckett and enters the west branch right in the middle of the village. So it had great water power potential. That phase started around 1800 and went to the turn of the century. The second phase was, of course, the coming of the railroad and the industries that it brought with it, and also the water power industries were able to expand because the railroad was here. So that obviously that starts in 1841 when the railroad came through. 90% of the built fabric that we'll see on the tour today is from that second phase, the post-railroad phase starting in 1841. Only about 10% of it will be from the water power phase. But the water power phase continued through to the turn of the century. Since 90% of what we'll see is post-1841, you're going to be seeing a lot of Greek Revival architecture. That was the most common architecture at the time. We can start with the A&L Market over there, which is was built as a commercial property just as the railroad came through, so probably 1841 or 1842. One of the features of Greek Revival architecture is it's gable-fronted, meaning they take what we would have considered the side of the building in previous architectural styles, like Federal or Georgia, and they made the side the front of the building. And they did that so they could show off highlighted mostly by the triangular pediment at the top of the building that mimics a Greek temple, a pediment on top of the Greek temple. It would normally have wide pilasters that run along the corners of the building and end with a little, what New England carpenters would have thought of as a Greek, uh, top of a Greek um, column. It would have ended with a wide cornice. Some of that has been covered up on, on that building, but obviously you can see the pediment is still there. The front, the windows in the front um, were a more Victorian period addition, but that's a Greek architecture without the, the thing hanging off the side. Very symmetrical. The window